Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. So, I've been doing pickup height, doing all kinds of different things to get the guitar playing correctly, beautifully, and I think it is. see it's super versatile so you can start songs off kind of like with an acoustic vibe you know and then get all hardcore so I lifted the uh, pickups up I mean I dropped them down and then lifted them up and I think I've got them in a, a spot where they can you know where it'll sound good I was trying to get rid of that like top end kind of rattle uh, it was like sort of an out of control, uh, nasty, fuzzy, kind of distorted tone, and I just wanted to dial it back and get it more like my Les Paul Custom, which has a lot of clarity and, and just sort of, you know, it sounds so right. And a lot of that is because I spent a lot of time with that guitar. I re had it rewired for modern wiring, put orange drops in it, 500k pots, and I. Uh, uh, did a, um, a little mod to keep the high end when you roll the volume back and then I worked really hard on getting those you know exactly where I wanted them and they're amazing pickups the other great humbuckers I have are in my Flying V those Gadow pickups that are hand wound in North Carolina those are incredible those are as good as any Gibson pickups I've ever heard I might like them a little better than a lot of them uh, those are good ones uh, but one of the things I found out is I was super concerned about the electronics on this. And you can get Artec, you can use Artec to sort of rebuild this if it goes bad, if you can't get the original parts on the circuit board or whatever. But I've got a little bit of good news. I found out that one of the things that happens to those circuit boards, the, the reason for the fail, is that there's a battery uh, cover here on the back. And on mine's got the prototype cover because this is an old you know, original, original run, like 68, 69 uh, production that ended up not getting released till 72, 73, and they re-released these guitars. These guitars ended up at the Partridge family and Glen Campbell and people like that. So inside of this was a foam uh, uh, pad, you know, in order to kind of protect the batteries and protect the circuit board or whatever that's kind of exposed here. Because there's also trim pots in here, which is crazy. You can kind of also adjust the pickup levels with the trim pots. I've just been afraid to get into doing that but I might very well try to do it because I'm guessing it's still set at the factory setting and at factory setting the idea is to get the two pickups to have about the same output which they actually do right now so I'm guessing that messing with that might send me into a tweaker's world where I can never get things back to where they were so I'm, I'm gonna go slow on messing around with those trend pots. But I find that fascinating. Like if you're a tweaker like I am, this guitar gives you a lot of opportunity to just completely weird out and waste time. Not write songs and worry about how high your pickups are and this and that, which is always what I end up doing. You should be writing songs instead of spending so much time on pickup height. But anyway, so that's what I found out about the electronics and lucky me, the prototype did not have that battery uh, pad in there, that piece of foam that ends up kind of flaking and disintegrating and becoming carbonized and melding with the circuit board and causing it to ground out and the traces get all screwed up and everything. Uh, and also, the other thing, and this is something I could picture doing easily, like forgetting and putting the guitar away in a, a case because you're not playing it, and uh, leave the batteries in there and those go bad and corrode and ruin it with the electronics that way as well, which is one of the most common ways you see toys and stuff to get ruined is you forget and leave the uh, uh, batteries in there, you know, and then the next time you open it up it's all foamed up and everything with acid. So uh, what I wanted to talk about with this thing was the amazing intonation on the bridge. 
So, a uh, friend of the channel, Helix World, has some amazing intonation ears, and he heard some stuff on my guitar. I thought I had it all dialed in. I actually had forgotten to get the E string dialed in. It was way off. It was a little, not too off, but it's like maybe a, a, a half a step or a step sharp. And uh, he heard it. So, I know he's got good ears. And I think he'll be happy when he hears what happened here because I've read a lot of bad things about this guitar in general. Like, it's just a weird design. It's actually turned out to me to be an awesome playing guitar and it feels great, sounds great, I love it. So I think that a lot of that was just internet talk uh, based on people making decisions on things they've never even had experience with. But uh, this bridge is an unusual bridge. I had heard first that it would be very difficult to string it and I like using 1152 so I thought for sure that was going to be a problem. It was not even a thing at all. I mean like the only thing I can think of that might have been what it was is the space between, you know, where it goes in the hole and where you have the, um, the saddle, uh, maybe if it's pushed back, if you had to intonate by coming back a little, there wouldn't be much space to grab the string. But literally what I did was I went in and just kind of pushed the string back and it popped up a little and just right through. And you can, uh, it just isn't a problem. And it took the 11s beautifully. It actually was almost intonated for 11, so I only had to do a couple adjustments. So the next thing I heard was that it was tricky to intonate. So I was like, okay, well that's a problem. And that these nylon saddles are no good, that's another thing altogether, but those ended up being really cool. And I've never had a guitar that intonated as simply, as easily, and as user in such a user-friendly fashion. So this guitar is known for being ergonomic as far as it, the, you know, the comfort and the feel of it. The neck is a miracle, I'm telling you. This is, any Gibson person needs to feel this neck, you know. I'm sure that if you, fa if you found an Ovation Balladeer at a pawn shop or if you went to a music store and picked up an acoustic guitar, you would get the sensation that I'm talking about. But this is a really, really fabulous neck, so I love it. But uh, what I wanted to talk about here was this bridge and this intonation. And it really is a, a miracle thing. I mean, it's like a really, really smart system. Uh, you have these two screws that kind of uh, attach the, the bridge to the body and adjust the height. Now, I have not really had any experience yet with getting the height adjusted. For whatever reason, usually I, I'm always wanting things to be different from how they are, but the action on this is just right. It's lower than my Strat by a lot. My Strat's actually like Stevie Ray Vaughan high. Uh, just because with strats, I don't know why, but I can't stand any kind of like the strings dragging on the frets. I want to hear the, the note, you know, and it also gives me a good workout. I went back to that guitar after playing this one and it's so much harder to play than this neck because this neck is everything's like flatter, lower action, just really easy to play. Feels fantastic. So I have had no desires to mess around with the the, the height, and I'm not sure how you do it. There are two screws here that attach the bridge. It might be there, but I don't want to mess it up, and I don't want to change anything, so I haven't experimented with that. Uh, so I don't, I can't tell you what goes on with that. But these uh, intonation screws are just absolutely brilliant. I'm telling you. So right where the strings go in, to the left of each string hole is the appropriate uh, screw for that nut, for that saddle. Uh, sorry, for that saddle. So if I need to adjust my E string, my low E string, I just come back here and it's, it's also everything on this guitar, the, except for the, you know, the, the pickguard screws, but the pickup adjustment, the intonation, the bridge, they're all just standard head, not even Phillips heads. So you just get a standard little screwdriver like this one, like a computer screwdriver or like a little electronic screwdriver. And the hole is not even that, the, the, you know, the screw, uh, the peg head is not even that small or anything. So you don't even have to spend a lot of time with like magnifying lenses. Like I can find it right now, it's just in the groove. And it turns like a dream, like, I don't know if you've ever intonated a Strat or a Les Paul. It's very trial and error and like just weird things happen. Like with a Strat, you've got Allen wrenches, you've got your screwdriver and you're doing this and doing that and trying to adjust the height and you got to do it with two of them because the string can go this way or that way and it's an amazing those bent steel saddles if you want the pure strat tone that's the only way to get it in my opinion uh, everything else kind of dulls it down that one gives you that real just stratty tone so you need to do it but the you know it's kind of um, 
it's almost like Leo just took basic metal parts and things like that, you know, like hardware drawer stuff, and just made it work. And it's amazing. But it's some of it is very primitive. And you get something like this that's just so fine-tuned and so easy to do. I mean, I can't tell you how easy these things were just flowing. And I, I've never intonated a guitar like happy. And usually when I'm intonating, I'm like hating it. And this one, I was like, I looked at my wife, wow, can you believe this? Look at this. You just boom, and you know, you put, you get a harmonic, or you get on the 12th fret, and you just, you're a little flat, you're a little sharp, and you just tweak one way or the other, boom, done. And I loved it. It felt so precision. Like instead of a Strat or a Les Paul, where it's kind of, like as you're doing it, it'll some kind of just sort of jump, and you can feel the string grabbing and everything. This is just smooth as silk. So another, like, super awesome thing about this guitar, whoops. Another super awesome thing about this guitar is the ease of intonation. So, my electronics work. The electronics are replaceable. If for some reason you get one of these and you want to keep the pickups but your electronics are dead, you can use Artec and get pretty close. Or you can find somebody who knows guitar pedals because I found the circuit on, on the Ovation Fan Club. I need to join that and start being a part of that because uh, I feel like now I can contribute after the experience I've had. Uh, I, don't, I hate going places and not having anything to contribute, you know, and just, you know, being dead air. So uh, I think I could actually contribute there, let people know some of the things I'm discovering, because I don't know that there's people with that much experience with these types of pickups, with some kind of crazy system like this, and this type of bridge is really unusual. Uh, and it reminds me, when I was going through making my Schechter video a while back, it's been almost a year probably, uh, I was doing research on what Schechter was up to nowadays. He's in, I think he's in Arizona, if I remember correctly. And I remember him saying that his whole trip was active electronics. He has like a Strat type of build. And he was doing something with the electronics. And his goal was like to not have an amplifier. I don't know exactly what he was doing, how many volts he was putting out in these circuits. But the idea was like basically to connect the guitar uh, to the PA system so that the sound man and you would have the sound man would have complete control of what he's doing with your sound and you have complete control because you're doing it from the guitar as opposed to connecting it to an amplifier. I didn't really look that far into it. I don't know if he's selling it or if it's just something he's doing you know for his own experimentation for his own you know work and friends. I don't know, but it's sort of like this. so it's fascinating to me that I was originally attracted to the Schechter thing. Uh, and now I'm attracted to this Ovation thing. I find it fascinating that companies in the 60s and 70s that were trying to innovate and the innovations they made really were something that people uh, continue to use. Now the Ovation obviously, the active pickups, uh, this funky bridge, the nylon saddles, those are all things that did not become popular. But to see how well they work, uh, especially coming from me, I'm like a kind of fancy myself a bit of a purist or I have in the past, you know, like if I want to get a Stratocaster, I want to, I want to get, do the right thing with the Stratocaster, I want to build a telly, make it like authentic with the uh, bridge and saddles, you know, the brass saddles and all that stuff. And uh, with the Les Paul, I like ABR bridges, you know, and I like, uh, I mean, I'd like the Nashville bridge as well, it's on the custom, but I like everything to be like, you know, the original way just because I think they got it right, you know. Uh, it, with those original Les Pauls of the 50s and 60s. Uh, so anyway, fun stuff. But I think that uh, this bridge is amazing and I love having a guitar that's easy to intonate. So uh, if you have fears about the bridge, the pickups, all that stuff, I'm here to assuage them. Next time.